Hi guys, and welcome to the very first video in my tutorial series on how to make Minecraft ready models. The first part is going to be about setting up your 3ds Max environment so that you have a studio file to work from every time you want to start a new project. So it's going to be a simple video, but it should help you have something that you can work from um, and that we can follow on from for my next videos. The first thing you need to do for your studio file is that you need to set up your unit scale. So this is probably the kind of view that you're going to have when you're opening a new file in 3ds Max. So what you want to do is you want to come up here to customize and you want to go to unit setup and then you want to go to make sure that you're in generic units by the way because if you're using 3ds Max you may have it set to a different display scale but we want generic units and we also want an international lighting units. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to system unit setup and then you're going to make sure that this is one to one and you want this set to meters because in Minecraft a cube is one meter by one meter by one meter. And hit OK and OK. The second thing you want to do is you want to set your home grid size because right now if you're in a normal setup one of these grids is 10 units by 10 units and that's probably not so good for Minecraft. So to do that you come up to tools, you go to grids and snaps, grid and snap settings and then you go across to home grid once the window opens and here you want to change grid spacing to one, that means that each grid is one unit. You want to leave it at 10, you'll notice this shrunk down quite considerably. I'm going to leave it at 10, that means that every 10 units you're going to have one of these big black lines. And you want to probably change this to 8. I like it being at 8 since um, Minecraft works in uh, multiples of 8. So then we want to just close that out now that that's set. And here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 by 8 in one unit size areas. Next you want to create a cube. This is just going to be the base thing that you can work from or just your perspective reference in your scene. And you're going to want to put that in this corner because this is your positive X and your positive Y corner on this grid. Um, and you're going to want to make sure that it's one by one by one. And then you're going to want to come up to here to move. You're going to want to make sure that this is at 0 0.5 by 0 0.5 by 1. Something that I like to do to make sure that Max stays accurate when you're setting these figures is you just change everything to some arbitrary number. Here I'm setting it all to 1. It doesn't really matter the Z. And in X I'm going to change this to 0.5. And Y to 0.5. And Z it's going to remain 1. Well, no, actually in Z it's going to be zero again because the uh, axis point is on the bottom of the cube. Sorry about that. So here we are in Max and we have our cubes in here. So what's next? Next we're going to set up textures. Now I have a Dropbox link at the bottom of, in the description for this video uh, where you can find a set of grid patterns that I've set up for this project um, and that's going to be the what, what you apply to your model so that you can better understand what your UV mesh is doing. We're going to get to what that UV mesh is in the future so don't worry too much about it now but you wanna, gonna, you're going to want to do this setup now so that we don't have to do it in the future. So to do that we want to make sure that you have those files in a good area, a um, good place to put those. Uh, let me just drag this over. So you want to make sure that they are in where your scene assets are for 3ds Max because that's where it's going to automatically look for your textures when you are trying to set things for 3ds Max. So that's usually in documents, 3ds Max, and then scene assets. And here you want to make a folder or something, or oh, in images, sorry. I've got it in images. And then you want to go into Minecraft. Well, 
I've created a folder called Minecraft and in that folder I've put those assets that you'll find in the zip that I've got there. So have a similar folder structure to what I've done. You can put them absolutely anywhere you want to, but I highly suggest you put them there. It keeps things tidy and it means that that Max has a good reference so that you can quickly access them when you need to. Anyway, so you want to make sure that you've got those in that folder. We'll just close out of there and then you want to come into your materials window. If you don't know how to access that, you press the M key. Here I've already got this set up and this is what it's going to look like for you. But I'm just going to quickly delete that. It's all gone. And on, over on here on your left side, you will probably have these standard material types. And you also got these maps. What you want to do is you want to drag in a standard material. And we can shrink that down. We'll double click that. And we'll call it 16 times checker. And then we want to set a diffuse map. So to do that, we're going to click that box over here next to the diffuse map setting, and it's going to open this window, the material map browser. You want to click on bitmap, and then OK. And then it's going to ask you what file do you want to use. See, I, it's already pointing me to the scene assets folder. Usually it be, it'll be here first, so you want to go to images, Minecraft, 16 times checker, OK, open. Now that, that 16 checker is in that zip that I've got you linked in the description. So make sure you have that all ready before you start doing this step. Once you're in here, you want to come over to your bitmap. It's linked, as you can see, in this map view. And you want to double click so that the settings over here appear. And then you want to set some settings, because otherwise you're going to have some silly looking materials when you apply them. The first thing we're going to do is in cropping and placement, you're going to do apply and you want to set it to place. And then you want to come over to filtering and none. Once those settings are set, leave it be. We'll just tidy that up a bit. And then you probably want to rename this to 16 times checker as well, just to keep things tidy. So we're going to do that again. You select the two. You hold shift and you click and drag and that copies them exactly and then we're going to rename this one to 24 times checker because that's the next size up in that zip that i've given you and then we're going to come across oh, i think i'm just changing the wrong one here <laughs> sorry 16 times that's a good point actually make sure you double click on the one that you want to change every single time don't just assume that if you click it once it's going to um, be the correct one. So we want to change that to 25, 4 times checker. Over here we want to do the same, 24 times checker. I didn't capitalize this one and I'm a finicky person so I'm going to just recapitalize that. Double click on here, down in bitmap parameters. The only thing you want to change is this bitmap and you're going to change that to the 24 times checker. Now, that is how you set up your first one and how you copy it. We're going to do that for every single one, and I'll be right back once I've set them all up, including the stone checker that's in there. Okay guys, I'm back, and as you can see, I've set up all the textures again. Um, something you want to note is that in each of these, 16 times checker, 24 times checker, 32 times checker, 48, and so on, and in here we've got the stone PNG. The reason I like to have the stone PNG here is because it gives me a good reference for um, the aesthetic of Minecraft as well as the, the native 16 times resolution that Minecraft uses for its textures. Uh, we'll get into texture resolution and texture styling a little bit later, but um, what we're going to do next is we're going to apply this material, 3ds Max likes to call them materials, to the cube down here. So all you need to do is, with the material window open, click on your cube. As you can see, your material window stayed in the front. And what we want to do is we want to put material to scene, assign material to selection, our cube just went grey, and then we want to do show shaded material in viewport. And what that did is it applied the texture, and as you can see, the red on this 
here material means that it's applied to something. It applied that to our cube, and now it looks like a cube of stone from Minecraft. If you press F9, the render window would show us what we've got selected in the perspective window. We have a nice stone cube. And the next thing you're going to want to do after we've finally applied that material to the cube is we're going to come up here and we're going to come to uh, save as. <laughs> and then we're going to find our scenes. And we're going to probably want to create a new folder in scenes um, in order to house our um, Minecraft projects. So we'll just call that Minecraft as well. We'll come in here and we'll say MC Studio. Save it as a max file. Make sure that it's saved as a max file. Now it's saved. Now every time you exit, uh, let's see, I'll come back to new, it's completely blank. And now every time I want to start a Minecraft project, all I have to do is come to open and open MC Studio. And there we are. All our materials in place, all our grid settings set, and it's ready to go. So that actually finishes us up for this uh, setup of our environment for 3ds Max. Uh, in the next um, part of my tutorial, we'll be going into the basics of modeling. Um, I'm not going to tell you what we're going to be modeling just yet. That's going to come in the next one. But we're going to be starting our model for a simple model for Minecraft. And hopefully you can follow along. Um, something that this model will have is it'll be low poly count. It will contain a transparent material in it. So that's something else we're going to have to cover and create a new material in this window. And it will be something just simple. It won't have any features to it. But hopefully you'll be able to put that into the game later on and following Pahama's tutorials actually it's a really good way to learn how to put that into the game anyway i'll see you guys later and i hope to see you for the next tutorial thanks bye